Hey, what's up? This is Chosen. Hope you're having a fantastic week. This is going to be a Raid Shadow Legends video going over the end of the week daily wrap up. And I need to get you my take on the craziness. One of the bigger changes I've seen them make recently, they are finally going to be addressing the elephant in the room or the sheep in the room when it comes to polymorph. So I'll give you my thoughts on their change of finally looking at addressing this because of yeah i did a video recently talking about polymorph and how it's just completely wrecking arena it's like the only blessing people are taking in the higher tiers and all of that so what we're gonna do is cover everything happening in game and in the raid community as we head into the weekend let's get into it Alrighty, so first of all, if I sound like crap or look like crap, it has been a couple days. So I also run a channel and a team and everything for Diablo 4, and it launched a couple days ago. I basically stayed up for 24 hours straight trying to make sure I'm doing my part, grinding the game, and producing content for my Diablo channel and all that. It will eventually settle in to a normal workload, but on the launch week things are obviously crazy so i am definitely up against it right now but wow it is crazy that planarium is finally going to be jumping in to make changes to polymorph and we're going to get into that here in a little bit but i also want to cover some of the basic raid news so all of this stuff i'm sure you all know about by now and also i do a giveaway for all of the call of the arbiter series if i don't have time to do the dedicated video about the kale episode then I will do that giveaway in a different video. So I'm gonna try to fit that into the workflow, but I do wanna give out the resources surrounding the Kale episode and like the previous commenters and all that. And I will get that done here on the channel for sure. And as far as summoning events, this is a pretty big one because we've got the 2X Sacreds going on and double dipping with the 10X for Prince Kaimar. So I anticipate today to be a decently popular day for especially some of the higher spenders and the more end game accounts on pulling shards kaimar is actually a decent one to even have a duplicate of because you can have like a pvp kaimar and a pve kaimar so he's one of those better ones to have two fully built fully maxed out copies to change your account and help give you more versatility so i do think this is going to be a pretty popular 10x it's what people are looking for it's a 10x that double dips with the 2x on the shards and then in a few days, we will have a CVC launching on a Tuesday and Wednesday, and it will be a CVC that does not have personal rewards. Then after CVC on Thursday, we're going to be getting the fragments for the new Skinwalker Champion. And the Skinwalker Champion is being pretty underwhelmingly received in the community. It's looking like probably like 25% of people are going to go for the fragments because what from the polling I was doing here on the channel, most people were kind of underwhelmed as far as their first impressions of the kit but as we get closer to the fragment events kicking off i will definitely get you coverage here on the channel letting you know ex the like the updated stance of where the community is and who i think should go for the fragments and who i think should skip it and kind of my opinions on all that for sure as we get closer here in a few days but then under the tournaments tab the stuff's going to be pretty simple over the course of this weekend again the most important thing happening is probably that 10x and the 2x for kaimar and sacreds so you've got a pretty normal classic arena takedown uh, i mean you definitely want to spend your tokens efficiently no matter what really so just kind of like don't wail out or anything but spend your classic arena tokens then under the fire knight tournament there is an immortal soul stone up for grabs at 3k i do think that's nice to get to so i think this is going to have a pretty good participation rate for sure and you can see that it's already got so it's got over a day and a half left and it's already at 17 percent in my group which is pretty good it's it, most tournaments are going to be in that five to ten percent range so this is about two or three times more active than just your normal standard tournament in game and then the tag team arena tournament right there celebration pack we'll plug that in here in a little bit and then for the gallant deck of fate going on you all know the drill on that so far and then the dungeon divers that will be double dipping a little bit with the fire knight so if you're looking to grind the fire knight you've still got a day and a half left on that so you can kind of wait until you blast a bunch of energy until it double dips with the dungeon divers if you would like because they don't double dip right now but there will be a little bit of a window here as we head into tomorrow on sunday where they will double dip a little bit and okay i'm sure all of you know about this by now or at least most of you maybe if you've been busy as we head into the weekend and stuff you don't but plarium is finally going to be talking about addressing 
Polymorph. And what they said was many arena teams rely on the Polymorph to discourage landing debuffs on them or stripping their buffs. While this limitation was the original purpose of Polymorph, we see that its restricting impact is much higher than we planned. Therefore, we are going to introduce the following change. A champion's accuracy will start affecting their chances to transform an opponent into a sheep unless the Polymorph is upgraded to level 6. I don't like that, but we'll get into it. The Blessing stat bonuses and the chances to apply Polymorph are going to remain the same. We will provide a free Blessing reset after the specified rebalance. I do like that. The rebalance date is yet to be announced, but it is unlikely to be earlier than July. Early, unlikely to be earlier than July. So it's it's not going to happen in June. So it's not going to be happening in the next month. It's going to happen in about five, six, seven weeks from now, which is a long time and a long time to kind of theory craft and prepare. But okay, there's a lot to talk about right here. So basically what Polymorph does or what it was intended to do is buff manipulation is extremely strong in raid, especially in pvp if you got buffs and they don't and you're kind of controlling them obviously you're going to be at a huge advantage so what polymorph was like supposed like intended to do was so, like like give a little bit of risk for that like if you're going to aoe buff strip the enemy team polymorph was there to counteract that and give a little bit of risk to that because okay i'm going to aoe strip all these champions but if there's like two or three of them in polymorph that's risky for me so it was intended to kind of balance the balance of power between those like massive AOE buff strips that are super popular in the arena, which is why we saw champions like Madam Ceres be one of the best epics in the game for PvP for years, and why a champion like Mighty Uko was so sought after because of all of the buff strip, and then also the, the placing block buffs is, is amazing as well. But that's why that's so strong. But what this did was champions that get a lot of value out of that, especially someone like a Ramantu, it really hinders their value and it's been a little bit more impactful than it ever should have been and it's basically like the only blessing you can take up in the higher tiers of arena and i did a dedicated video kind of talking about this recently so what planarium is going to be doing is they're going to make there be an accuracy resistance check when it comes to actually placing the polymorph debuff when you turn a champion into a sheep so like what it's going to happen is let's say a madam saris does aoe buff strip on your team well, let's say they've got a one star uh, polymorph. There's a 5% chance of placing a sheep whenever a champion has a buff removed. So then each champion that has the polymorph blessing will do it like, like if this percentage procs, if that percentage procs on a champion that has the polymorph blessing, it will attempt to place the polymorph on that Madam Saris. And there will be an accuracy resistance check where if the champion trying to place the polymorph does not have accuracy sufficient enough to actually land a debuff on that Madam Saris, the Saris can actually resist the polymorph, which hasn't been the case recently. But what that means is that I think polymorph is still going to be a popular blessing for sure. But what you may see start to switch is your high resistance champions like a Duchess or something like a duchess like like how much how much accuracy does my duchess have right now yeah my duchess has 135 accuracy right now which means what you're going to want to do is get kind of like a base level of resistance maybe so what we may see is a little bit of a re-gearing where people have to get a little bit better blend of accuracy and resistance they might want to get like just that extra like 50 or 60 resistance on a champion to make sure champions that are super high res well, the polymorph blessing won't be able to actually polymorph their debuffer so we may see a slight regearing and i think it's a step in the right direction i don't think it's the perfect fix or what i would have done but also i really dislike when they do this when they when they change like the whole mechanic of how something works at six stars so it, like it takes accuracy all the way one two three four five and then at six all of a sudden the blessing completely changes and it doesn't take accuracy at all i don't like when they do that i understand what they're doing i get it they're trying to make the six star blessing super incentivized because they want people to care about spending money and developing their blessings and they want the whales to feel an incentive to get the six star and i get that like make the six star bonus powerful but don't completely change the blessing like it takes accuracy all the way to level six and then it just strips accuracy because then at the higher tiers we're not even changing anything it, it, it's not even it's not even being altered like at the super top tier of platinum arena a polymorph didn't it didn't even really get changed because it, it's just functioning the same 
for all those people that have the six star blessing now it, it's hard even for whales to get six star blessings on everybody they're using is hard but it, it's not gonna be Now, it is still difficult to get six-star blessings. It's not like every single person is going to have them in the arena who spends a decent amount of money. It does take a little bit of work and a little bit of RNG and luck to get a six-star blessing for everybody you're using. But we're going to see over the course of time, as more and more people, more and more high spenders get those six-star blessings, we're going to be right back to where we were already. So I, I, I think it was a good change overall. And for 90 something percent of us, it's gonna probably be a good change because Polymorph might get a little bit less popular and it, there might be a little bit more trade off to getting value out of it. But because of a couple reasons that I talked about, I still think it's gonna be an issue. And eventually we're gonna kind of be right back to where we were. So I still think it's gonna need to be adjusted at some point down the road. And you'll probably see everything, unfortunately, pretty much get to a point where it was already in uh, anyway if plarium isn't willing to adjust kind of like the core functionality of it but anyway that's my thoughts on the polymorph blessing rebalance changes i'll try to get a poll over on the anniversary tab so remember to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on our community polls and head on over to the community tab and let me know what you think about the polymorph blessing change and then in our next wrap-up video i can discuss how the community feels about it as well so Elite Sacred Pack, nope, uh, Sacreds are going to be too overpriced on that one, in my opinion. Um, the Soul Stone Pack, 20 for 10. Um, okay, so if you're in the market for Blessings, if you're a spender on Blessings, if you're kind of like a upper, medium to high spender, this Soul Stone Party Pack may be worth thinking about. Um, and then the Anniversary Festivity Pack. So you've got Chicken, Energy, um, and then it ends with a Sacred. Um... And it's only one. Eh, I mean, for a high spender early game player, I could see this being a, a, a decent investment. But for 90% of you, it's probably better to hold off. And then this is one we definitely do want to plug in. So we've got the $15 and the 400k right there. And then the 150 of the multi battles right there and then 3000 energy right there and boom a 0.88 with five arena refills of boom there is the classic uh tournament going on but eh, it's a 1.05 and it's also time gated right here over the uh, three days isn't too bad it's basically a 1.0 so yeah nothing uh nothing super crazy going on here in the shop which is unfortunate it would have been fun to have oh wait here we go oh no it's only one sacred so it did pop up, but it, you know, this is technically gonna be a pretty decent pack. Let's reset this. And because of Plarium's prices on their grade, so 100K and then a 10 energy refills of boom, a 0.25, we add the sacred obviously, and that will kick us up to a 1.25. So like for anybody that wants to buy sacreds, this is one of the better ones you're gonna see, but I think they, so our offer calculator works off of Plarium's value not like our biased personal one so technically it's a good pack but in my personal biased opinion um anecdotally i'm not gonna say it's a good offer i don't really like purchasing sacred shards at that price but for high spenders it is a 1.25 within the context of plarium's packs neo are you sleeping already it's like 11 a.m dude what's going on Okay, yep, Neo's tired too. We've had a uh, a long week with the launch of Diablo 4. I can tell that I sound a little bit nasally, a little bit stuffed up, so I apologize for that. But I'm doing my best to still put in my five hours a day of staying in the, uh, in the raid loop, and things will settle down eventually where I can get into a normal workflow of like doing raid five, six hours a day, doing Diablo 4 five or six hours a day, and get on to the normal grind. It's just on launch week. Things are obviously going to be crazy, and I'm having to play like 14, 15 hours a day of Diablo 4. So anyway, I appreciate all of you. Remember to subscribe on your way out if you enjoy daily Raid Shadow Legends content. And let me know what you think down below and over on the community tab about the Polymorph Blessing. I will see you soon in the next video. Peace.